Well, hello everybody. Uh, today it's Saturday and uh, President AMLO is at the uh, rural hospitals in Chihuahua uh, in the rural valley of Allende. And so I'm going to go ahead and translate today because I find that his weekends seem to be more personal. So I'm going to go ahead and translate this one. I'm going to hit start. So hello and very good day. And we're here visiting and we've been visiting other municipalities. So today, Mr. President, I want to initiate by uh, salutating and uh, congratulating and recognizing uh, the work of the pres of the workers, doctors, uh, workers, paramedics, nurses, beloved nurses, and those that are working in the hospitals and in the rural areas that are in the brigades, and we just said hello to them over there. And I want to say hello or salutate our traditional medicine uh, doctors and the administrative um, uh, people and the laboratories and x-rays, community action people, the youth of Gara, and the ones that have retired. And also to say, uh, that your matters will be attended to, as always, by the Social Security. Our governor, Javier Corral, it's always a, a pleasure to say hello and to have been in the Senate for that many years, and we find him here again. And to say also to the senators that are accompanying us and all of you, the municipal president, that we've got her borrowed here for now from the presidency, but soon she'll be going to the hospital. And to say to you that our labor or thing that we've been charged with by the president, it, it consists of going to the places and not that uh, magic politics where they try to do it by being far. Now it's to go and to be able to listen to the problems and be able to talk to the people that we're serving. And this is the only way we can have to be able to act when you're trying to transform a reality, when you want to change the route of things, because that is what materials of uh, health have to be dealt with, to be out there and to accent Social Security. An idea that that was neoliberal was that that a very cold and isolated ways and frag fragmented way had left us in a very sad uh, situation. We know that the the things we want to do have an objective, not to forget these things, but to remember them so we change them. And what was done? Uh, if personally, IMS uh, Bienestar or did that they were working against the current as to what was happening in other systems and other places. As it was this being establishing the uh, data that is available or statistics, the only uh, rea the reality. So what you did was you confronted it and you listen to the people and you looked for solutions. And that is the great difference between a doctor that is that used to be under the directives before. They used to wait for things to get worse. But now the other thing that health is only in absence, yes, it's physical um, health, but also the social health, communities, um, towns. And let's not wait for the demand, but to do a preventative uh, way and to involve health. And you need to uh, give it the same attention to health as we do the communities. And I am very proud to use this vest that says I'm helping the communities. And always to do the community 
And this that implies um, during uh, doing this work, like for the past 40 years, and congratulations. And another element also that is important, this idea that decisions are taken from far and by a few. That's what our history has demonstrated, that you need to involve the uh, society to take collective ideas, and that's the best way to do things in a correct way. The, uh, I want to um, salutate the volunteers for help and let them stand, let them stand, socorro. They're 27 years, 24 years, for Beatriz working with us, and they work. It doesn't mean they get a salary. They do it in a volunteer way because that is what their community asked her. It's the responsibility, the commitment she made, and we have to, that stands out. Citizens that do things that way because that's the way they manifest their responsibility and also their um, pride in being part of a community. And that's why we're happy to be here and to recognize the great value of this program and to recognize that you did things, even though it was uncomfortable, not because it was easy, because you did it in the correct way. And Eames uh, had a uh, uh, hypocrisy in the neoliberal period. But now what's making us so proud is that we are fighting corruption and we want to fortify and exalt this program. And that is why, friends, here it is not good to fail. And when the president affirms his commitments, well, so-and-so died, so what are we going to say? We, we, are, we are like the eagle, I'm sorry, the uh, chicken hawk. And we have to do, comply with our commitments and, and fulfill our commitments to the people. So I want to say goodbye saying that the fourth transformation in the area of health has a, a very clear route and it is going in that route with, with that um, great um, future and that this new uh, history will count and that's why I want to say to Ignacio Allende who was the one that gave the name to this place. And something he said, something I would never forget. Without mattering the, uh, the size of the city or the place that the people are born, that's where they grow and help their people. The community of Inns Buenos Aires is, is, is there for the people, and we'll do it from our uh, coming out without just being in our offices. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's listen to the message that the president of the Mexican uh, United States, uh, Manuel Andres López Obrador, I'm sorry, Andres Manuel López Obrador, friends from the Valley of Allende, um, the little all the areas, municipalities of this region in the state of Chihuahua. I am very happy to be here with you. In effect, we are actually uh, going through the whole country and visiting. I visited several times Chihuahua. I've been, um, I've had the, uh, the uh, pride of uh, visiting all the areas of Chihuahua and municipalities of Mexico, and I will continue this way, visiting the townships and picking up the feelings of the people without a divorce between people and government. Democracy is for the people and for the people and by the people and for the people. And that's why we'll continue to uh, come and visit Chihuahua and all the towns of this extraordinary state, which is full of history and culture. And also, it's a state that 
has given le lessons of politics and especially is of the states that is a precursor again with a fight for democracy. That is why it's very important to be here and to be accompanied by the governor, uh, Mr. Corral, because we have good relationship and we work in a coordinated manner, even though um, we're from parties that are different, but even against each other. But like we are now, we are governing. We have to uh, be sure and work in a coordinated uh, manner. Like uh, the a party, like its name indicates, is a part, but the government is for all. And we have to work together and in a coordinated way. The people are first, and that is why I'm very happy to be here in the company of the governor of Chihuahua. Javier Corral. Uh, besides that, he's a person I respect because of his honesty. We might not be in agreement with some things on some other matters, but Javier is a person that is honest. And that, for me, counts a lot, very much, that there be honesty. Because, look here, nothing has harmed a Chihuahua more. Nothing has uh, caused more trouble than a dishonesty of the governors. They've destroyed everything. That's the principal cause of inequality of social, economical, insecurity, violence. And for that reason, the objective, the principal objective of the new government that I had is to end corruption. I always repeat, and if they ask me, to say in five seconds what because uh, I never even really talk fast, because I t take a long time in, in speaking. For me to say, like what I, um, while I'm standing on one foot, what is, the, what is the plan for the new government? Ending corruption. So he stood on one foot as he said it. Because if we clean the government of corruption, then we'll get ahead, and it'll be, it'll be that we will gain the rebirth of Mexico, and we are cleaning it from the top down. The way you clean some stairs, giving an example on the top, and if the president is honest, and the, and then the workers are, um, government workers will be also honest, but if the government is, um, the president is corrupt, then the others will be corrupt, and then you won't have a good government. But if we end with corruption from the top down, then we will have, we will take the, take our uh, beautiful Mexico, beloved Mexico ahead, that there not be corruption. That is the key. And yes, we are advancing. Look at how important it is to combat corruption, that not only does it moralize the country, but it also betters the image of Mexico with the foreign countries. But besides that, and above all, it is, uh, we save money. All that would go through the uh, tubes of corruption can be now destined to development for the well-being of the people. There is no need for that, uh, uh, and that is the purpose, to demonstrate that there is not a need to increase taxes 
or create new taxes, nor increase the prices of uh, gas hikes or, uh, to help the country can be helped simply by stopping corruption. I can give you a few examples because you might think that it's only one matter, that it's conceptual, theor theoretical, rhetorical, or illogical, like to say that we're going to end corruption. No. It is because it does so much damage, and it's an option, an alternative, that you not permit corruption. So last year, I'd like to give you an example. They used to steal 65,000 uh, uh, million uh, uh, pesos of gas by the uh, clandestine uh, theft. 65,000 million pesos. And it meant the theft from the uh, gas from the ducts. And it was a, a theft that was tolerated because they even had advanced technology and they knew where they were stealing from. They had monitors, system of sensors, a whole office in the tower of Pemex with some desks and monitors. And as the pressure would go down from the ducts, that's when these, that when they were stealing, when there was a clandestine theft and they were uh, draining the gas line. And so an alarm would sound in this center, uh, control center of the Tower of Pemex, but it could be ringing all day and all night, and they would do nothing. So we said, enough of that. We're going to end with this theft. It was not easy because they tried to uh, play a uh, star, um, what is it, uh, when you when you use your hands to fight? And so we had uh, the army help us, soldiers, and they helped us to uh, help that whole zone where the principal ducks were. And the people behaved very well. And the people are a very strong people because they bet against sabotage and they exploited the ducts so that we would uh, be left without gas. So for three weeks, we didn't have enough gas internationally, but the people made lines and they withstood it and supported us and we gained it to end that theft. But no, it has not completely ended. But they used to steal 800 pipes a day. And now they're stealing 40. Still. However, if we continue like this, how much are we going to save this year? About 50 a thousand million pesos and that money is that which is being utilized to attend to the demands of the people and another example they used, didn't use some didn't used to pay taxes the ones on the very top the influential people think of a company a famous bank well, that company, that bank that you're thinking of did not pay. They were condoning their taxes. A great injustice because the, the, the workers, everyone, the doctors, the nurses, the field workers, the commercials, medium, big companies, small companies, well, the small companies, but they had an elite that was select, that had privileged that did not pay. They forgave them their taxes. So in these two six-year terms, they condoned 400,000 million pesos. And so we made a decree to end condoning of taxes. And now they presented an initiative to reform Article 28 of the Constitution, which will, it will be prohibited to condone taxes to great uh, big contributors. It will end that corruption. So now, 
also. It is now a great crime to have corruption. Do you know that for 25 years, it was not considered a grave crime to have corruption? Since 1994, they reformed the penal code, and I'm not going to say who was governing at that time. That I'll leave that for homework. But so that it would not be considered a grave crime to be corrupt, so that when the person that would steal could just go out with a fine. But now, as of 25 years, it is a grave crime to have corruption. And what also is a grave crime, which is also electoral fraud, is a grave crime. That one that utilizes or does uh, elective crime or uses the the uh, that buys debt, um, buys votes, or uses any government money for uh, um, elections, will go to jail without fail and without fine um, bail. Another thing, I was reforming Article 19 so that now it is a grave crime to create uh, phantom uh, companies or to make a phantom uh, like uh, receipts. In this way, and, and they did this in the last uh, uh, years, and now we will have a budget without having to raise prices of gas. Uh, or increase taxes, but now we will have enough with our budget, and we are doing well. We have no deficit. We are not spending more than what we make, but the income is enough in order to comply with our commitments that we support the people of Mexico, that the government supports all and give preference to the people that are humble, the, the people that are impoverished, for the good of all, first the impoverished. So we are saving. There is no corruption, and also there is no luxuries in the government. There is no high salaries of 700,000 a month. Now there is a law that says that no one can earn than what the President of the Republic makes. And I lowered my uh, salary so less than half of what Peña used to uh, make without um, compensation, 108,000, I believe he said, and then from there down, we're trying, we're lowering the, the uh, uh, salaries of the upper uh, uh, people, but we're raising the salary of the lower class. We're saving because now we there doesn't exist this, the presidential state which was the, do you know how many people used to take care of the president? 8,000 units of the presidential state. Not even does Donald Trump uh, be taking care of so many people, by so many people, so many elements. But now we got rid of that, um, disappeared this uh, presidential state, and now they're in the National Guard to take care of the people, and the people take care of the president. And the one that just uh, fights for justice has nothing to fear. But, but not only is it how many were taking care of the president, but how much are we saving? I used to talk to Javier that the presidency from last year used uh, 3,000 uh, million pesos and 2,000 were for operations of the of the president. No, that was just part of it. 2,000 million. And that's why they made these false receipts. They would take a trip, a presidential trip, that was supposedly, let's say, a thousand razors to shave themselves. Like, they would have to shave themselves every five to ten minutes. 
en un viaje, and then on one trip una factura, they did a receipt or invoice of 7 internet. million pesos pues solo, este, todo un año pues, dos años um, I'm not muchísimo sure. If there was just a lot Entonces, spent. I'm not sure what he said exactly. I so from 3,000 million, we're going to use about 800,000 at most from the presidency. What is the savings? 2,200 million. And like that, all of it. We're, we're already selling the presidential airplane. How do I get here to this valley? The way I've always come. I take a road. Yesterday, we were in, in Coahuila, in Matamoros, San Buenaventura, and we arrived to Torreón, and then we took the road. And then we went to sleep in Monterrey. And today, early, we took a trip in line, a convoy. A, we took a, a, a flight to Chihuahua, and today we're here with you. And how did we come from Chihuahua to here? On the road. There is no airplane. There's no helicopter. We're selling all of that fleet of helicopters and airplanes that belong to the government. Imagine that if we came in an airplane and a helicopter, how would we find out the, the condition of the roads? How would we know how in reality the country is? And what we say, because the airplane was costing, even before it was done being paid, because they've got it on credit, 7,000 million pesos. And of course, it's a luxury airplane for 280 passengers. That, even that, Trump, Donald Trump doesn't have one of those. And uh, helicopters and airplanes, new ones. From the last six-year term, there was six uh, new uh, airplanes, jets, and besides the presidential one, 1,000 million each one. Six helicopters, new ones, so that for the fun, uh, for the officials to travel, 1,000 million each helicopter, and they would take these helicopters to go play call. And that has now ended. No more will we continue with that wastefulness. There is no more private medical attention for high-functioning officials. Do you know how much they used to spend on the budget to give private uh, medical attention to high-functioning officials? 6,000 million a year. They even did uh, plastic surgery, and they would stretch their face at the expense of the people. All of that has ended. And for that reason, we have a budget. And that is why we are now giving uh, money, and all the people, we're sending the money for the older adults, not 1,160, but 2,550 for all for all elderly adults. They are now getting the pensions for uh, uh, children that are disabled, and we're giving grants for the students, preschool, primary, secondary, middle school, any of those, all of those that study uh, preparatory. And all the country has already has rights and are receiving their grants. 3,500,000 in preparatory school, 1,600 bimenstrual. That's universal. And the students of higher level education of uh, low income families, 2,400 uh, monthly, 300,000 people. And those that are not studying and don't have jobs, we're giving them contracts. Now we almost have about 900,000 youth that are contracted in this uh, program uh, that's youth creating a future. They're giving jobs so that they can learn so they can be capacitated to work in uh, any kind of job. 
so that all the youth have a job to either a right to study or work or both. It's a thousand to a million thousand better than to have the youth having the children working or studying than to be on the streets and we'll never again turn our backs on our youth. Why are we going to rip our clothing and say, oh, how sad, how, uh, how much insecurity there is, and what do they do? And really, to prevent insecurity, what did they do? Nothing. What they did with the youth was to call them uh, and make fun of them and say, neither do they study nor do they work. And now, we're giving a special attention to the youth because we don't want them to be caught up, to get taken up, and to become part of the gangs. That the jails are full with youth, and they lose their lives, mostly the youth. I saw a sad thing that's lamentable in Quetzalcoatl, Veracruz, where there was uh, in a boat and who was uh, putting the fire, uh, putting the gas for the fire was a 15-year-old youth. And that's why we need to give attention to the youth. And that's why it made me very happy to be here with the youth in the Cara. This is a program that all the hospitals have in Ames Vienesar, Gara, which deals with four important matters, um, um, violence, no to addictions, and, um, and to prevent falling in, into obesity. That is to say, to no, eat consume, well and not to consume chatarra. junk food. So Un that's what the youth are doing, and give a hand of applause to them. I missed the first one, you guys, but it's something to do with drugs, I believe. And it's very important to work with the youth Mucho. a lot. También and also, we are now supporting the fields. No they won't have a lack of resources for the producers, uh, water, or small people with small uh, ranches. And now we have fixed the prices uh, for the, uh, um, uh, they will be bought, bought um, uh, you know, during the, uh, they will be buying the, the grain at a guaranteed price of 5,600 uh, uh, pesos a ton. So they will buy from all the uh, warehouses. And they also fixed um, the beans to 14,500 a ton. And for corn, I'm sorry, wheat for um, flour, 7,690, and for rice, 6,120, and for milk producers, 8 uh, uh, pesos are a liter. And so they will continue to get the help that they will get from Procampo, and also a guaranteed price. So we will pay them well to these producers so they can be compensated for their work. And we're starting at first by buying from the producers that have less than 20 hectares, that is to say, the small producers. And we will be amplifying it to 30. Pretty soon I will be an announcement for the people with uh, beans to, uh, to raise it up to 30 hectares and we will buy from them as well for them. And then after that for everyone, because the most important thing is that we become self-sufficient in food and we not be buying from foreign places what we consume. Imagine the paradox. So Mexico is the producer of uh, corn and it is originated from Mexico, that holy plant that grows everywhere, in the mountains, in the valleys, in the coast, in the tropics, everywhere. 
And now, Mexico is the place in the world that buys the most from foreign places, being that it originated here. And we buy the beans and this corn for bread. 80% is bought from foreign places of what we consume. 80%. And rice, we buy 90%. And we buy the milk. And we buy meat, pork meat, and, and beef. And so we need to be self-sufficient because of this. And that's why we're giving you this support. And we are going to continue to take into effect these actions and we are going to better the system of education, public education, and we've already done part of it, and we consider and respect those that uh, think differently, but we believe from the very beginning, and we sustain that the uh, reform, education reform was not good. It didn't benefit. It had to do more with the question of politics and uh, ideological. It was a plan that it was imposed to on us from foreign places, the structural reform, reform, energy reform, uh, from Hacienda, labor, re education reform. It was an agenda that was imposed upon us onto Mexico without rhyme or reason, because how can it be a true uh, reform that they want to take into plan or practice against the teachers? Who teaches? It's the teachers. How are you going to impose something without the, the uh, teachers, and that's why we canceled it. And now we're going to start the teachers, parents, authorities, to better it, to make it real, uh, this correction in uh, education. And we're going to come to an agreement without confrontation, convincing, not imposing ourselves, not in anything, as President Juarez used to say. Nothing by force, all with reason and with correctness. And that's how we're going to behave. And here in Chihuahua, we're going to get and become, come to an agreement with Javier, and we're going to take and to effect a plan of rehabilitation of schools. And we're going to give the budget directly to the society of the, each school is going to have their parent teachers uh, in charge so that they can take charge of the maintenance of the schools. And, and to tell you that I came to Valle of Allende after this whole introduction, I enter into the matter. I come to visit the hospital and to see you all, to comment that we are going to better the system of health, public health in all the country. And that is why I am doing this uh, run. And I'm accompanied by the health and uh, all the public servants that have to do with the public sector. And we're visiting the 80 hospitals of the programs of IMSS Bienestar. And then Valle Allende, we've done uh, 64 that we have visited, and so we're advancing. We have less to go, and we're going to strengthen the whole health system, public health system, like the director of the hospital, uh, your countryman, that, that he got confused, and it's good that he entered into the system of IMSS, Bienestar, and not the other program with all respect. This program is extraordinary 
I've said it a while ago uh, with the children of Gada, and we'll be seeing that video. I know this program since it was initiated about 40 years ago, in 1979, because when this program began, I was director of the Indigent uh, Institute in Tabasco and Copla Mar uh, delegate, and I was six years from 67 to 82 in the zone Maya Chontal and I learned how to work with the people and for the uh, poor people. Six years in indigenous communities. And at that time, it initiated this program, the creation of rural hospitals and medical units. And it's been evolving, devolving, uh, changing names. First it was Insco Flamat, then In Solidarity, and then IMS progresa and then oportunidades and now prospera and now IMS bienestar but it's the same program and it's very good that it was maintained this program and we're going to strengthen it there's four actions general ones for the public sector first we make, have to make sure there's no uh, need uh, shortage of medications for the hospitals, Todas las claves, for all areas, all medications. Not one will get less and others will get, one will get 120, one will get 300, and some of them 600, and then third level, maybe a 1,200. No, all medications that are required. If a patient comes here, that has a problem of, uh, say, maybe had a stroke or, or heart attack. So you will have the equipment and the medication so that he'll be able to make it to Chihuahua. Because if you don't have it, the equipment and the medicine, then he won't make it. So we need that there not be a shortage of medications. That's number one. And I, and I said here, for the responsible parties, here it is, he's there with us, Juan Antonio Ferrer Aguilar, he's in charge of uh, health and well-being, and you already know Dr. Isela. And those in charge that it not there not be a shortage of the medications. In this case, it's Dr. Alejandro Calderon. He will be in charge of that. So he makes people accountable. The second thing is that there not be a shortage of nurses and doctors, specialists, because there's vacancies. We do have that problem. They put so many obstacles to the youths that wanted to study medicine and all those that wanted to study in general. And they lied, saying that they couldn't pass the exam and they would deny them uh, to all these students. And now, we don't have the doctors nor the specialists that are required by the country. Imagine the damage that they caused. So we have to resolve this, that there not be a shortage of nurses and doctors and specialists. And for this, the doctor, Alejandro Esparzmik, is in charge of it. He is the one that will be in charge of that and pending that. And the third thing is to better the infrastructure. What I want to um, praise those in maintenance of this hospital. That's the second thing. It's the best, the second place of all the ones I've visited out of the 64, it's the best second place because it's been in action 39 years and it is 
very well maintained, this hospital. And it is due to the work of these public servants. And yesterday I was in one in San Buenaventura in Cahuila. And we visited two yesterday, Matamoros and San Buenaventura, Cahuila. And so from there, they're falling apart, the ceiling. And it is, if you have to visit that area, you have to wear a hard hat because so we have to better the whole infrastructure. And here I open a parenthesis to say and make a comment that one of those trips to Chihuahua that I was with a governor, I went to uh, Ciudad Juarez to see a hospital that they inaugurated without finishing it in City of Juarez. They did a great fraud with that construction, uh, but to console us, it's not the only one. That's how they left more than 300 in our whole country. But that one, it's one of, one of the most scandalous because they made it look like on the front, like, like the scene, like the movie uh, underwear without an inspector. And I'll leave that for you to think about. And they cut the ribbon and they inaugurated it. And behind it, it was all black, nothing inconclusive. And that hospital, we're going to finish it. We've already come to an agreement with the governor so that they can conclude it in the city of Juarez. And we're going to better all the installations of uh, security and east uh, and the uh, uh, director of ISTE is letting us know that we're about to finish a substitution of hospital. And what percentage? 80%. And I will come and inaugurate it as soon as possible. All that which is infrastructure, and for that, the responsible person is uh, architect Carlos Menenses. And the other action, which is number four, medication, structure, nurses, and, and making them uh, full-time employees, making base employees. Not only from security, but also the secretary, 80,000 in the country that are now working as um, uh, like a, uh, they're they're not they're contracted workers like um, I can't think of the word, <laughs> but it's. Uh, like they, they have a, a temporary contract. So this is what I wanted to inform you, that we are very happy to be here with you, and we're going to continue to meet you, as I said. And I can't find myself as they speak in my place. I can't, I can't be comfortable in National Palace. I have to be out with the people. When I'm over there, from Monday to Friday, but um, not always, but I am there because I give special attention to the problem of uh, insecurity and violence. Every day from 6 to 7, I meet with a cabinet of security, defense, marine, Secretary of Governing, Secretary of Public Security. So we receive every day at 6 in the morning the report from what's happening in the whole country, and we make decisions. But I am in the capital on the weekend. I, I travel through the country. So today, I'm going to continue visiting you, and we'll continue to see each other. And we ask that you help all of us, help and support us 
to govern so that we can all govern because, because the mess that they left us was I, I think it was the government that left us an elephant that was laden down that's got rheumatoid arthritis and he's got bad habits imagine besides it's big it's, it's a body that advances very slowly imagine to lift it up and start to push it so that it'll work so it'll walk and that's how it is it's very difficult the government was not made to help the people it was made to facilitate the robbery and corruption they cared about businesses they did not care about the people or the towns so we're standing up that elephant and we're pushing him are you going to help us push that elephant yes that's all that is all so let's all go get together and push our beautiful mexico chihuahua Long live Valle of Allende. Long live Chihuahua. Long live Mexico. Long live Mexico. Long live Mexico. And that's his. So the people really love him, you guys. It's pretty impressive. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you today. Uh, for you, those of you that don't uh, speak uh, Spanish, it's just a very um, beautiful thing what's happening in Mexico, that they're really helping the people. And uh, today uh, he talked about um, what, what uh, they're doing in uh, these areas of Chihuahua, uh, the, the, uh, the medical, um, visiting all the hospitals, and this is, I think he said 62 or 64. Um, so he says that they're like number two in terms of their uh, condition of the hospital, that they've been very well maintained there, which it's been, uh, he says, standing for 39 years. And uh, he also mentioned uh, some that were, um, you know, fakes. <laughs> There was one that uh, had um, cut its uh, ceremonial ribbon, and actually it was not finished. It just had a false front. And since he actually goes there in person, he got to see that it was not finished. But he's going to go ahead and help them uh, get the funds to finish it. But uh, just it's just wonderful um, how much they're helping. And, you know, as a nurse, um, I can appreciate how uh, there was so many volunteers that are have been doing this job really without pay because the way the government was working um, there was a lot of people were not getting paid um, they were not being hired full-time and I was trying to recall the word registry they were like registry employees most of them they they, they couldn't get a, a full-time job so nobody was really making a good living um, so he's going to uh, make people full-time employees of the uh, hospitals. Another thing which he didn't mention today, but he's mentioned at other times uh, when I've translated, that um, that uh, he's uh, going to be, um, oh, I lost it, I lost it. Let's see. Uh, well. There goes my brain, it, <laughs> it took off on me. But anyway, uh, there's quite a few things going on uh, in Mexico, but um, this is one of them is that they're uh, really helping the people. And he mentioned all the programs that are now being uh, used to benefit the people and the finances that are going out to the people, the education, uh, the funds for the elderly and the disabled and, um, the programs uh, for school, uh, grants for the students, uh, just a lot of stuff. So um, the people are, are very happy because he's actually taking care and visiting all the different areas on the weekends. So um, 
he said at one time that he feels like he's going to make uh, two terms out of one, but I think it's going to be more like three because he works uh, weekends. Or if it, not three terms, which is each term is six years, so he should be at around 17 years, actually, in the six years if, um, if all goes well. Uh, but anyway, I'm just very impressed with the way they're helping the people in Mexico. And uh, as I've said before, I'm not politically inclined. And for me, it's not about politics. It's about uh, helping the people and letting the people know what's available to them. And also, uh, the other thing is that I want to let the American people know what's possible when a um, government um, official that is in charge of the people's um, well-being really cares and is really doing something to help the people and uh, let's see let's see if anything like that is um, possible for the US I know a lot of other countries uh, like Peru um, Spain uh, the Belgic a lot of people um, are hopeful f to have a president like AMLO and uh, I know a lot of people aren't paying attention and the news does obscure it. So I figured YouTube, um, that's a way to show it. So here it is. Hope you take advantage and learn. Be an educated people. Bye.